everyone, my name is Sarah, and today we're going to talk about a Harvard astrophysicist who claims that aliens have visited the Earth. So, this is a totally crazy, but perhaps not too crazy, revelation. So, I'm going to just get right into the article for this week. So, I'm just going to get right into the article for this week. Although scientists are reluctant to conclusively state that alien species do not exist, the astrobiology community has not yet published any scientific theories about contact between Earthlings and extraterrestrial life. However, new research points to evidence that Oumuamua, a Hawaiian term meaning scout, used to describe a celestial phenomenon observed by astronomers in 2017, may defy earthly explanation. Very interesting. Uh, so, as you said at the beginning, scientists are reluctant to conclusively say that alien species don't exist, because that's something that's really difficult to prove, right? Especially since the universe is so humongous, so it's really hard to say um, that something isn't there, because there's no way to check every single atom to make sure that alien species do not exist. So people, these scientists, they don't really want to, they're reluctant, they don't want to do it, to conclusively, or tortezogoro, state that alien species do not exist. However, the astrobiology community has not yet published any scientific theories about contact between Earthlings and extraterrestrial life. So this means that people who study biology in outer space, I think this might be uju sangmura in Korean, I'm not entirely sure, and if I'm not right, uh, make sure to let me know in the comment section below, I won't get offended or anything. Um, so people who study astrobiology, they still haven't published anything that says that there has been contact between Earthlings, or Shiguin, people who live on planet Earth, and extraterrestrial life, or Wegein, or Wege Sangmura, or Wege Sangmurche, I'm not exactly sure. Um, yeah, so it's hard for them to say that it doesn't exist, but there's also no proof as of yet that it does exist. So uh, it's a little bit tricky. However, New research by this Harvard scientist that we mentioned earlier says that Oumuamua, which is a Hawaiian word that describes a phenomenon that happened in 2017, he says that this phenomenon, it might defy earthly explanation. So when we say that something defies explanation, that means that it cannot be explained. Uh, so when we say that it defies earthly explanation, that means that it cannot be explained by anything that we know about planet Earth which is kind of indirectly hinting to the fact that maybe it can be explained, but just by something that's not happening on Earth, but in outer space. So on other planets, which would be super cool. The object appeared in the sky as a 100 meter long cylinder or a pancake shape, which ruled out the possibility that it was an asteroid or a comet. Oumuamua was also 10 times more reflective than ordinary space rocks from the Milky Way and increased in velocity as it swooped by the sun faster than could be explained by gravitational equations. Hmm. So how many of you guys know what a UFO is? So typically in movies and in popular culture, when we think about, you know, aliens from outer space, they come in down in their spaceships, it kind of looks like, uh, like a flying saucer, almost like a frisbee, uh, but you know, with like the little bumps on the top and the bottom. And um, so, you know, sometimes people think of that as the, you know, spacecraft that aliens use to get around. We don't really know. Uh, however, it seems like this Oumuamua thing was a long cylinder or a pancake shape. So it, I took this word for word from uh, the article that the, the published, uh, that was published in the newspaper. So um, a cylinder, it's kind of like a can of Pringles. So it's something with two circles, and then it's, it's kind of surrounded by a uh, rectangle that's been folded into a circle like that. Uh, so you can think of a Pringles can or a soda pop can, um, or a pancake shape. So take that Pringles can and you smush it down, just like that. So it might have been you know, a really wide but short, not very tall cylinder. And because it was this shape, it ruled out or made impossible the possibility that the object was an asteroid or a comet. So asteroids are like space rocks floating around, and some of them are, 
you know, in orbit around the Earth or around other bodies in outer space. And a comet, at least according to Google, is a small solar system icy body that when passing closer to the sun warms and begins to release gases and that causes it to release light also. So fun fact, I was actually born when Halley's Comet was visible in the sky. So uh, probably most of you are younger than me and you probably don't remember that. And actually I don't remember it either because I was just a baby, but I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, so because of the shape, we know it's not an asteroid. We know it's not a comet. And then in addition to that, Omoma was 10 times more reflective. So it, sh it shone back 10 times more light than other types of space rocks from the Milky Way. And that's the galaxy that we live in. In addition to that, this Omoma thing, it increased in velocity. So that is the rate of change in your speed as it swooped or flew around the sun faster than can be explained by gravitational equations. So these scientists, they use these super difficult mathematical formulas using the laws of physics and especially that of gravity. So the thing that keeps us, you know, stuck to the earth so we don't fly off into outer space. The, these really smart scientists, they use a lot of different math equations to try to calculate the velocity or speed that this thing would be flying by the sun, but actually they were off by a lot, which means that the thing it's probably not made of what we think it was made of. While other scientists have been stumped in their attempts to find an explanation for the phenomenon, Harvard University astrophysicist Avi Loeb has a simple if controversial explanation. He thinks that Omoma was an unidentified flying object piloted by aliens. Who? these are big claims to be making, very interesting. Uh, so other scientists, when they looked at this thing, they're like, okay, the shape, it means it's not a comet and it's not an asteroid, but the reflectivity, the amount of light that's shining back at us, it's, it's also really, it's 10 times higher than regular space rocks. So what is this thing made of? We don't know what this thing is. And then in addition to that, it's much heavier um, than what we think that it's made out of. So. They're having a difficult time. They're stumped. They don't know how to uh, find an explanation for this phenomenon. However, this guy at Harvard University, astrophysicist Abby Loeb, has a controversial explanation. So when something is controversial, it means that a lot of people don't agree about it. So Abby Loeb has said that he thinks it's a UFO piloted or flown by aliens, but um, a lot of people seem to not really agree with him. In 2018, he published a widely circulated paper which defended his hypothesis that Oumuamua was humanity's first contact with an artifact of extra extraterrestrial intelligence. Loeb has also published his findings in a semi-autobiographical book titled Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth. Very interesting. Uh, so this Harvard University scientist, this astrophysicist, this person who studies the physics of outer space, he published a paper that defended his hypothesis that Omoma was humanity's first contact with an artifact. So an artifact is something that is made by people, or in this case, uh, it would be aliens. So a fossil, uh, it's uh, usually something that is embedded in rock from a really long time ago, uh, but an artifact is something that had to be made by somebody. Uh, so for instance, spears, would count as an artifact. Uh, tombs in ancient Egypt would be called artifacts. And yeah, just basically anything that is artificially or created and then is from the past can be called an artifact. So an artifact of extra extraterrestrial intelligence means that it was something that was created or made by extraterrestrial uh, intelligence. Uh, so it was the first time that people in you know, our collective memory have interacted with an object that was created by aliens. And he also, in addition to this article that he wrote about this, he also published a semi-autobiographical book. So when something is autobiographical, now let's break this word down. So auto, that means self, right? And then bio, that means life. And then graph means to write or to draw. 
So an autobiography is simply a book that someone writes about their own life. So they write about the life of themselves. So he wrote a book, and it's not quite a normal autobiography. It's a semi-autobiographical book. So it means that it's partially based on his own life, but also partially based on other things. And this book is titled Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth. While Dr. Lib's work has been popular among journalists and the general public, his fellow scientists are less impressed. In a Nature article from July 2019, critics of Leib said that his claims are cavalier at best and destructive at worst towards the efforts of the astrobiology research community. Hmm. So, you know, what Professor Leib is saying, it sounds pretty provocative. It's very interesting. It's very controversial. It's something that no one is really doing right now. But people who work in the same field as Dr. Lib, they don't really think that it's such a great idea to be publishing these things so soon, since there's not a lot of proof. And so because of that, critics say that his claims are cavalier or careless at best and destructive at worst. So, you know, if I was working as an astrobiologist, you know, I'm trying to find evidence of alien life and, you know, I'm working really hard to make sure that the data I'm working with is very, very high quality. Uh, if someone comes in and says that, oh yeah, this is totally proof that uh, there are aliens and they're interacting with people on Earth, but there's really not a lot of conclusive evidence, it's kind of gonna make us all look like crazy people, so I probably wouldn't like that either. And that's why they say that his claims are careless or cavalier at best and destructive at worst. All right, well, I hope that all of you guys enjoyed today's video about alien life. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. And I hope that all of you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you guys again later. Okay, bye.